Joining us now to talk more about the president's plan in Afghanistan, his reaction to Charlottesville, and a push, his push for impeachment, is Congressman Brad Sherman. He represents the 30th District in the San Fernando Valley and has been an outspoken critic of the president. Thank you for being here on your break. Good to be with yeah, you. Yeah, a working break for you, it seems here. Mm -hmm. Question for you. The head of NATO saying they support the president's comments last night on Afghanistan. Your thoughts? The president really didn't change policy. He changed rhetorical style. He said the same things, but he sent it pounding the table. We've, our strategy in Afghanistan has been to have a limited number of troops, whether that's 8,000 or 12,000 is a consistent policy, and to prevent the Taliban from taking over the whole country without putting in enough troops to completely destroy the Taliban, which would probably be impossible at this stage. But when he was campaigning, he said, I'm not for the U.S being fighting these wars in the Middle East. Well, he said that then. What he's doing now is very consistent with what our policy has been under George W. Bush in the latter part of his administration um, and through most of the Obama administration, and that is prevent the Taliban from seizing the cities, prevent terrorist organizations from creating, in effect, a caliphate and a training ground uh, in the country. Uh, but to uh, not try to totally obliterate uh, the enemy because that would be near impossible. Congressman, uh, it appears that many people are concerned about Iran emerging in Afghanistan mm -hmm. and perhaps the two of them cozying up together, which clearly would be very bad for this country. Um, but when he talks about winning, the president said... Yesterday that we could win in Afghanistan. What do you think his definition is? Well, he gave you a definition, prevent the Taliban from taking over the whole country. He didn't give you a definition, turn Afghanistan into a peaceful d democracy or even a peaceful country where the Taliban was totally defeated. So he calls it total victory, but doesn't claim that he can totally vanquish our opponents. There are some reports that the president was very presidential. That was one of his better speeches. Your thoughts on the speech yesterday? It's, if you're going to grade him on that curve, I think it was one of his better speeches. And his decision to step up, do you think he's listening to his generals? The step up, I think, the foreign poli the mainstream of the foreign policy community is in favor of this increase. Uh, it will prevent uh, al-Qaeda or ISIS from really controlling the whole country, where uh, what we learned from 9-11 was if they control a whole country, they can uh, more effectively organize highly sophisticated terrorist attacks. So ISIS tries less sophisticated. My next question has to do with both Charlottesville and mm -hmm. Phoenix. We know that the mayor of Phoenix asked President Trump to stay home because of his comments that he'd made about Charlottesville. Mm -hmm. What is your feeling on that? Do you think he should have not gone to Phoenix? Well, he's president of the United States. He knows to go somewhere, but his decision to have one of these rallies in Phoenix uh, is disruptive to Arizona. But his decision not to, to draw a moral equivalency between the Nazis and the Klan and those who oppose the Nazis and the Klan has, has really undermined uh, whatever uh, authority, moral authority. We need a president with moral authority. When you look at the office, the moral authority is just as important as the statutory and constitutional power. So many clear divisions in this country right mm -hmm. now and um, some unrest, as you can see, in mm -hmm. video like this. How do you think the nation comes together with people feeling different ways over certain issues like even the monuments, for example? Well, it's going to be hard to put our, to keep our, well, it's going to be hard to put our country fully together, but we will survive. We've survived much greater problems than we face now, internationally or nationally. Our constitution is strong. Our institutions are strong. And while the government in Washington may not be setting records for, you know, golden levels of governance, I think uh, this century will be great for America. Do you see uh, the president emerging as more presidential in recent days? Uh, obviously, a lot of the, the polling shows him to be at an all-time low, but he is speaking to his base today, essentially, and they seem to still love him. Well, it's eroding a little bit, but part of it is that this country has become more tribal, more divided. Um, you know, here people getting uh, a, a, a news program that is... Uh, that's balanced and that uh, people on the left and the right are all watching. 
But on those cable shows, you've got a network that only appeals to the right. You've got one that uh, only appeals on the left. And when people are getting their information from different sources, it's 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 much harder to keep the country uh, together. But when you talk to his base, or you see mm -hmm. some people interviewed, or even look at some Twitter comments, mm -hmm. he does have strong support in certain areas. And I'm not getting into some of the political controversies mm -hmm. that we've seen in recent days. Middle America, perhaps, who say, he still stands for what I represent overall. Well, we've got to listen to people in the Midwest. Uh, if they feel they're being looked down on because they're hunters, because they live in rural areas, uh, we've got to make sure that a, we don't have a president that, that, that seems to do that. And we need trade policies that resurrect American uh, uh, manufacturing. And, um, I, you know, and I don't agree with the Trump often, but I think... Uh, uh, we were organized in Congress to defeat uh, TPP, and his election also defeated it, although I think we had it beat uh, even before then. So one, th one thing you can agree on. Yes, a broken <laughs> clock is right twice every day. And there you go. Congressman Brad Sherman, thank you so much for being here today on Fox 11. Good to be with you. All right.